Welcome to this WDBE 2020 pre-event, Digital Situational Awareness in Construction. The event is organized by Alto University. If you are watching this stream on Zoom, but prefer better video quality provided by YouTube, go to aecbusiness.news diction. Write down your questions to the presenters in Zoom chat. The discussion and the workshop take place on Zoom after the presentations. Welcome to the Digital Situational Awareness in Construction webinar hosted by Aalto University. My name is Olli Seppänen. I'm a professor of operations management in construction at Aalto University. We will start by first having four presentations about digital situational awareness. After that first hour, we will have a workshop about digital situational awareness in construction. We will divide the group into five thematic groups and you have had a chance to pre-register to these groups. If you have not registered, you can enter your group selection to the chat window and we will assign you accordingly. And here are the names of the groups. We have a group about construction ontology, business models for construction ontology, machine vision based on ontology, that's mainly intended for those who are already familiar with machine vision and reality capture technologies. Collaborative management and learning from quality issues and new KPIs for situational awareness. So if you have not already done so, please register to one of these groups now by entering your choice to the chat window. The first pres presentation is about the role of situational awareness in fixing the productivity problem of construction. And everyone may be familiar with this picture about productivity in construction. We have a very stable horizontal line, the orange line, representing the productivity growth in construction since 1995. All the other industry sectors have been increasing rapidly during this time period, but construction sector is showing very stable productivity growth. In fact, in Finland, my home country, the productivity has not measurably increased since 1980s when we look at productivity data of individual trades. When we go deeper to this phenomenon, we find that only 20 to 30 percent of work is actually directly value adding. So this is a study of one of my master's, uh, master's students who did his thesis on carpenters and their productivity and used helmet cameras to allocate time into various buckets. And you can see here that actual work is just 21% of the work time used. And in this we have removed all the breaks. So 21% of the time without breaks. Much of the time is movement around in the building and working with materials, which is not value adding from customer's point of view. We have achieved the same result with multiple trades using different methods. So we have used direct observation, helmet cameras, indoor positioning systems, evaluated carpenters, plumbers and electricians. They also show similar results. In some projects this may be 30%, even 35%, but at maximum we have measured 30%, 35% value adding time. 
in construction. It means that 70% of the time is wasted. We are not getting the full cap capacity of our workers. In order for workers to be productive, they need a lot of different things to be available at the right time in the right location. So they need feasible designs that can be constructed. They need all the materials needed to implement their task. The space must be obstacle free, no mess must be available to work. Of course, the workers need to know where to go. Precision tasks must be completed. They must have the right equipment, humidity and temperature and other external conditions must be just right and everybody should know how the process is ongoing. So all of these eight things must happen for productivity to happen. And if you are missing any one of these things, then you are losing value added time and looking for materials or looking for space. So the key to improve productivity in construction industry is to focus on decreasing this wasted effort caused by missing one of these constraints. And here this uh, situation picture comes into play. At the moment, digitalization of situation picture has focused mostly on the blue areas, planned situation and change tracking. So we have a theoretical plan that we optimize sometimes very well using sophisticated methods. And then we have some change management tools. But red is what actually happens and it's very different from the theoretical world. This actual situation in the project environment has traditionally been captured by perceptions of human beings who then uh, store those perceptions in their memory and maybe they enter that information into some computer system. So sometimes information from human memory enters some kind of computer memory. But mostly the information is distributed socially in some kind of meetings. And there are many, many problems. So perceiving, for example, has, has an issue that, that people don't, are not aware of things that they are not actively looking for. So they don't notice everything in the surroundings, only things relevant to themselves. And they, they are typically strengthening their own biases and what they think should be happening. Memory is, of course, a problem. If you have weekly meetings and something happened on Monday and the meeting is on Friday, the memory of Monday may already be hazy. So you will not get an accurate situation picture by having meeting where everybody says their own view of the situation picture. That's why now there's, there are promising, promising technologies in the censoring side where you can automatically get somehow objective information about what's going on that can be automatically stored in computer memory. And then you can somehow automatically have a shared situation picture of what's going on. And if we can achieve this, this could be one key to improve productivity in construction industry. Situation picture differs for different stakeholders. So if we took, think about general contractor who have been mostly implementing these approaches, they are interested in reliable schedules, knowing what's going on, decreasing the cycle time of construction projects, and maybe getting transparency into their suppliers' processes. That's very different from what the blue-collar worker needs, or the subcontractor needs. They need decreased wasted effort, have easy access to information, know exactly where their materials are, know exactly where their tools are. The subcontractors need to know what's the status of all the other related work. But they do not need to know what is the status of unrelated work. So every single stakeholder has a unique view that they need from the project. And all of these information streams are stored in different databases, different systems. So in order to actually achieve a common situation pixel for everyone, we need linked platforms where we can somehow systematically store information in a standardized format and then have that information available in a role specific way. And that's, that's when we can say that we have achieved real-time situation picture. 
I will now go through a couple of technologies that are important for situation peaks. And one of them is real-time positioning of resources. So there are various ways to achieve this. You have a Bluetooth PLE beacons and indoor positioning systems based on PLE, or you can use different other technologies like such as wireless. In an outdoor situation, you can use GPS to position resources, of course. RFID has been sometimes used as well. Regardless of the technology, it's quite important to know where the equipment is, where the people are, and where the materials are. And this kind of resource positioning technology is one key information stream to achieve that. The other important information stream is reality capture. And this has been implemented already by, by several companies worldwide. So you have some way to capture images or laser scans. There are some mobile robots coming to market. The Boston Dynamics has the spot robot. For example, there are some European players out there as well. These are still in quite a prototype phase. The other option is to have human walk through the work site, use 360 cameras on helmet and, and capture information that way. And then of course you can do manual laser scanning of areas as well. Here the advantages are that if you have artificial intelligence solutions, you can automatically know what has happened. So you kind of need to, both of these data streams, you need to know what has happened in a location and who has done it. Which materials were associated, which equipment was associated, and who were the people who were associated with implementing that task. If you have that, you can calculate automatic schedule updates, get automatic productivity, and you can supply situational awareness of the production process for stakeholders. But now we have these point solutions for data collection and analysis. They are not quite doing it, because you still have people who are looking at videos, you still have people looking at point clouds. They all must be integrated into one seamless system. And workflows. Workflow information includes procurement tasks, it includes schedule tasks, it includes design tasks. And all of this real-time information coming from these sensors or reality gaps that must be linked to these workflows. At the moment, when companies are implementing these technologies, they suffer from information overflow. Yes, the superintendent can see from his app that, okay, now the plumber 5 is in apartment A36. But so what? It's not terribly interesting unless you have some kind of analysis and KPIs on top of that information. And it must be somehow automatically combined to all the other streams of information for it to be relevant. So we call this the digital twin of processes. Earlier digital twin has been understood as the end product, which is somehow getting real-time information. You can automate the maintenance functions. But now we want digital twin to be expanded into process as well so that you can, you can see who has done what at which time and evaluate productivity and make calculations based on that. In order to solve the productivity problem, we must have digital world changing the physical world. So if we take the picture about construction flows, for each one of these, we have some requirements for a digital solution. For example, in order for a worker to not suffer from lack of materials, we need to deliver the correct material at the right time in the right location. This requires a lot from the digital tools. It's not enough to know when the workers are going there, but we need to know exactly what material is needed. We have to integrate the logistics contractor, the material provider, into one stream of information in order to make sure that that material is on the site at the same time, at the right time. And the digitalization at the moment is not achieving this, these things. In order to do this, 
we need to link uh, all the data coming from different systems, make it flow, have distributed common workflow data, starting from design process, finishing with as built data for the owner, incorporating all the IoT and reality capture information as well as the more traditional production data and linking it all together in order to create possibilities and information that is needed for all these flows to be present at the right time. And to solve this problem we need some kind of shared ontologies and formats so that multiple point solutions can be integrated in a scalable way and that will be the topic of the next presentation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Seppa Törmä and I'm going to talk about uh, digital construction ontologies. So I will say something about uh, digitalization in construction uh, domain and what uh, would be the role of ontologies to support the digitalization and um, I uh, explain a little bit of, of the work that we have done with the, uh, with the specific ontologies in this domain. And um, finally, I will uh, give some examples how we use those ontologies in, um, uh, situ uh, in creating situa situational awareness in construction projects. So first, um, if you think of the uh, <coughs> construction domain, the, uh, and digitalization in the construction uh, domain. There are a lot of like, excellent solutions for specific tasks in that domain. For architectural design and MEP engineering, we have uh, BIM authoring tools. There are systems for managing product data, uh, making quantity takeoffs. Uh, there are augmented reality systems, systems for construction management, um, uh, systems for, for indoor positioning or monitoring site conditions and, and, and managing logistics, logistics and so on. And each of these uh, systems can have a, like a tremendous impact on the productivity and, and quality of the, the, these uh, specific tasks. But what we are actually now interested in here is the kind of overall picture. Uh, what happens uh, in the uh, construction projects overall? And then in addition to these specific tasks, the uh, connections between these tasks, the links uh, uh, between these tasks become important. So, uh, and, uh, in current uh, practice, many of these, these systems actually manage their own data and there is very little um, uh, references to other, um, uh, other systems or the data produced by other systems. Uh, and one of the key uh, to develop the overall uh, productivity of, of construction is to actually focus on these uh, uh, flows that, uh, information flows that uh, take place between different specific tasks. Now the uh, question is that um, um, when we have these links, they are not just uh, any links, like some, some, something like this is related to this or, or see also this, but uh, if we want to utilize these uh, links efficiently, we need to understand what they say in, 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 uh, in detail. So there, there are a lot of different types of links. Um, we, have, we may have uh, systems in one um, um, uh, or systems or designs in, in some architecture, uh, in some B models that implement something in an, um, some designs in uh, another model, or we may have, uh, let's say, systems in uh, MEP models that serve some spaces in architectural model. We may have same, uh, same objects in two models and we want to uh, maintain this connection. Uh, and so on. So there are numerous different kinds of, uh, kinds of relations and if we want to utilize this kind of linking um, efficiently, we need to understand what is the type of each link, what kind of objects are in the end of the link and what kind of pro properties those uh, objects have, what attributes they have and what further links they may have. And uh, if we are able to uh, produce this kind of uh, <coughs> linking between uh, different um, uh, different data sources um, in, in construction, it has a potential to improve the overall productivity of construction projects, uh, but also enable new use cases by, um, 
by combining information from different sources. And, and, and finally, uh, if we combine information, let's say, from BIM models, construction management, and, and, and sensor systems, we can uh, create uh, uh, a unified um, situation picture of, of what's happening uh, in a construction process. <clears throat> so in a, in a couple of um, large collaborative research projects, uh, addiction project here in Finland, and uh, uh, a B4 EEB project uh, funded by the European Commission, we have developed uh, a, a suite of ontologies, which, uh, which is called Digital Construction Ontologies, DICO. <coughs> And it, it provides a kind of a neutral and exact, exact specification of, of terminology in construction domain, which, uh, which uh, is, uh, developed, has been developed in a way that is uh, understandable for both people and machines. So it's basically created by people, uh, but also uh, should be utilized by, uh, let's say, application developers um, uh, in that area. But uh, the ultimate goal is, of course, that the data represented according to ontologies is, uh, is, ma is machine understandable and it's, uh, it uh, can support machine to machine um, <coughs> activities um, uh, and, and uh, let's say automate workflows or, or other things in the construction area. Uh, these ontologies are, um, are highly uh, standard compliant so we actually uh, uh, have um, some uh, main um, standard ontol uh, ontologies behind this, uh, this suit of ontologies. Um, there is uh, one top-level ontolo ontology and, the, and a BIM ontology um, that are ISO standards, and there are some other uh, established ontologies developed by Web Consortium. The first versions of the, uh, the DICO ontologies have been published, and uh, they are freely usable, and we would appreciate any, any feedback if, uh, if any, uh, anyone wants to utilize or ex explore them. And the address is provided here, so it's uh, w3id.org slash digital construction. There is an overall documentation available of the, of the, uh, <coughs> of the ontologies, and the ontology, uh, the suite of ontology is divided into different ontology modules. And for, uh, from, uh, for each of the modules, there is also specific uh, documentation and, and the, the actual definition, uh, definition in a web ontology language available. So the building blocks uh, of, of DECO is, is first, uh, uh, first the uh, uh, kind of a backbone uh, that is the um, kind of classification of basic construction entities that covers like building structures, activities, information objects, qualities, time space, aggregation and grouping and, and, and labelings. Uh, another uh, important area has been the activity flows, um, flow model uh, that comes from lean construction that uh, describes how different um, objects uh, come together uh, in, in activities like the, the transformed object, the labor requirements, equipment, materials, information, location and, and environmental conditions. Um, one important area is, is to support what we call multi-context data. So this is a uh, phenomenon that, that is per pervasive in construction management. There are a lot of uh, different uh, like alternatives or, or um, states of, of data that needs to be uh, represented. For instance, in renovation projects, you do renovation scenario analysis. Um, in project planning, you have um, the plant and actual values of, 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 of activities, um, start and end times. Uh, there are as designed and as built models of, of, of uh, BIM models, and uh, you, you may have uh, models at different um, uh, <coughs> level, uh, LOD levels and so on. We also support uh, the representation of variables and constraints that, that are important in, in planning and scheduling uh, tasks and also activity uh, representations that support uh, ultimately <coughs> automated uh, planning and scheduling uh, algorithms. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail, I just give a, a short, uh, uh, a quick outlook of what, uh, what the ontology looks like. So there is a um, big classification of, uh, of uh, uh, entities uh, from uh, processes, agents, uh, physical uh, 
entities and information entities and, and their uh, uh, different kinds of subclasses. And then there are, uh, there are more detailed representations of, of the uh, relations between, uh, between different uh, objects and their, uh, their uh, uh, properties, their kind of data values that they can, they can have. We have been utilizing these uh, ontologies in, in uh, ongoing uh, to develop uh, scenarios, and this is ongoing work. So we are, we are using these ontologies to uh, manage the renovation workflows. So we combine information from BIM models, renovation scenarios, location breakdown structures, master plans and week plans, and, and notifications to occupants. There are also uh, work going on in, uh, in a scenario that combines uh, information from four different companies in the area of subcontract monitoring. Um, so uh, it it's also uses um, location breakdown structures, positioning, quality, uh, quality inspection data, and, and material kitting and logistics data. And, uh, and finally, there is uh, one scenario that deals with the resource flow monitoring, uh, which also uh, has the uh, uh, indoor positioning data in the center, but it, it uses the schedule and, and BIM data in addition to that. So thank you, and if you are interested, uh, please visit uh, this site uh, w3id.org slash digital construction. And uh, we are grateful for any uh, feedback or recommendation. Thank you. Okay, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Our presentation uh, tells about Situation Room, the new way to manage construction. And, and this presentation, we have two companies and two presentations. My name is Mauri Laasonen, and I'm Research and Development Manager of Sveco Structures. And Sveco is a big international design company of built environment. And almost all of our work is done by using 3D models. And it's our routine to generate join those models to different kind of purposes of building and real estate sector. And we also actively develop our ET environment. And my name is Otto Alhava. Uh, I work in, in FIRA as a CTO. I've been working there for 10 years. Uh, my background is, is uh, in, in software and telecommunication business. I'm a software in engineer, so, so maybe that explains a bit why I'm so keen on, on digitalization. FIRA as a company is also a bit different type of, of, of than, uh, than what, what the other, other main contractors are. Our uh, focus currently in, is in digitalization, in modularity and, and developing the TAT production method. And our aim is to serve the whole construction industry, so we want to provide what we develop to the whole of the industry, not just using them by ourselves. And that's also the reason why we are seeking partners like Sveco, because we already know that it is not possible to develop uh, scalable solutions alone. Sveco's role in this cooperation is, is product is digital services, so that we can product especially those 3D models and, and give solution to the whole environment. And our three key words here is, is three-dimensional visibility, two-way communication and web interface. We are today talking uh, about the situation room, which is uh, collaboration tool for the whole industry. Our idea is, is to combine the data from the sites um, and in the first step what we have done is, is aggregate the, the data from different sources, different applications and then we have provided different types of, of projections for the businesses. So the, in the first step we have managed to provide to our own business units uh, a proper view to their ongoing projects and now we are 
uh, struggling with the visualization, which we think that this is one of the key components of, of using the data. So here we have, have uh, first of all, our, our path, uh, what we have done. We have worked closely together with, with Alto University. We have examined how real-time position should be used or how, how we should use artificial in intelligence, IoT, and combine that information with applications which we have been developing. We have uh, also integrated a number of, uh, of, of available software products in, into this platform. And here you can see examples what uh, we can then do with the situation room and, and the integration. We can, for, for example, show you or show the, the site or, or uh, our partners how the, the uh, or what's the real real time situation on on site? What are the tasks performed uh, if compared to the plan, or what are the con conditions uh, on site in uh, on real time based on on the use of the IoT sensors? Together, these these are already valuable for our business. But we, but we want to achieve more, and that's why we are working together with Sveco so that we could combine BIM into this. Yeah, as you see in the, in the right corner, there is two-dimensional picture, and, and that's usually usual available, but why trouble with 3D models? So, and the quick question is this visuality. So it's so much easier to see what, what's happening and where. And, and if there is problem, where it is and what is the surrounding other, other spaces. And of course, when we have this BIM behind, we can ask more information there and, and we can explain the situation and location to the others. So this is, this is the modern way to do, do this. And, and we believe that this is not, not too big trouble and, and we can really handle this. And, and the reason why we are so interested and keen on having, having the BIM model to be used in a visualization is the fact that that situation room is just the first step. Now we have managed to collect and show the data on, on control room which can locate either in, in a company's headquarters or on, or on the site. But the next step uh, is, is to hand over the, the situation room or, or the visualization of data to everyday use on site due to the fact that we have a number of activ activities which can benefit of, of, the, the, uh, say of the same data what we are actually uh, providing to the situation room this interface to us. So we need have to have a, some kind of common database where we can connect. And on, on these demands that, that there is access to this kind of database and we have allowed it, we can offer this kind of visualization and, and services to the web browser and we can for, fulfill this, this need of Vira that this would be in everybody's pocket. And what is need to, so that we get information on the BIM? Of course, we need a suitable BIM. Uh, usually there is no big needs to make changes, but some transparency and of course those rooms, if there are, they should be modeled. And uh, this information we want to visualize, it must be linked to the room and these geometrical objects. And this means that if we make, for example, measurements in, in this practice, we, the matter is, when it installed, it must be linked to this model. And this is new task on the, on the site, but it shouldn't be too bad. And of course, when we want to have a clear visualization, 
those uh, numbers, those measurements, for example, give give out must be changes to the colors that this kind of humidity, for example, in this picture is is not good for for drying of concrete. But uh, this there is some some new demands, but not technology is is easy. But of course, when you change the processes, then you have to have a discussion with all the parties. And uh, if we think about then this bigger bigger picture, uh, we really can publish this model in in web browser and have these IoT systems uh, read in and the user can can reach the data through web browser. And same way we have now this I IoT data, we can extend it, this, this visualization to other status data. For example, fabrication or, or schedule and, and so on. So there is only the sky's limit what kind of application we can use this. From our perspective, the using, for example, the on-site conditions and, in, and visualizing them on BIM is only the first step. We, the BIM as such is very uh, effective way of showing progress changes, whatever uh, data you have from the site. It even can be used for aid uh, the workers to, to locate the place where the tools are or, or where the tasks should be carried out. But the problem is that, that there is only uh, a little uh, or, or very few cases where we get the data uh, in, in proper format or collect the, the data automatically. And that's why uh, our call to action is for the whole construction industry is, is to, to start looking, start using the GS1 standard because it, it gives us uh, not only the unique identification keys for locations, uh, states or, 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 or products, but it also provides us tech, uh, means for, for capturing the data and, and interfaces for, for exchanging the information. And in, in order to, to scale uh, the, the uh, situation room or in order to scale the situation awareness to everyone's pockets, it is mandatory that, that we, meaning the whole construction industry, take together the step towards the standardization and, and standardized interfaces. And GS1 is, is very easily uh, and very uh, powerful step uh, we can take together. So, as you see, we, there is a lot of things to be done, but we are already done something and we are in the good good start in this this path. And now if you have some question of, of current situation or on future, please ask. Good afternoon. My name is Jukka Suomi. I'm digital construction manager from Trimbull Solutions from Finland. And uh, I'm going to present you what uh, uh, Trimble has been doing in the Diction project and also some future plans what, what we are intending to, to do. Uh, I'm going to present some existing functionality as well as some uh, proof of concept uh, demos and, uh, and also uh, some ideas of the future. Uh, and uh, please note that this is what I'm going to present. So then this, it's, uh, Trimble is not has no obligation to deliver any any of that content in, in the future so that might come out or might not the diction objective as agreed in the beginning is uh, is the kind of the elevator pitch was that so uh, three points what has happened 
so then really the facts that what, what has really happened based on the tracking the uh, reality capture what what is happening exactly now and last but not least uh, what shall happen next kind of the shared understanding of the of the situation in the future and who is going to do what and where and when Trimble is addressing that uh, with uh, digitalization drivers. So first of all, we are creating the fundamental common workflow concepts, uh, and then we are building an open integration platform using those, those concepts. We are do doing also some uh, next generation collaborative workflow applications, and the one important uh, uh, dimension is also then the collaboration ensured by the digital in uh, involvement of the people. So people are here in a key role because people are making the changes. So then they are th doing using the common standard data models and ontologies, doing federated solutions, integration, and, and, and at the end, collaborative workflows. Trimble is building this uh, workflow data model into Trimble Connect uh, backend, in other words, connected ecosystem. So we are integrating this data to the existing BIM models and documents we are providing an API for Trimble applications and, and third parties. Someday, maybe even connecting the machine learning to this end back end. Uh, in the diction, we have uh, three key points, uh, or you can uh, organize the data into three key points. So we are doing the ex extendable workflow data model to Trimble Connect ecosystem that contains of status sharing property sets breakdown structures, associations for managing, for example, sequencing. Then we are building integrations based on these concepts, uh, like estimation and weekly planning tools, integrating them to the BIM models. And the uh, third one is the digital consuming, so involving people to use the data. There's a, uh, two, two examples of that, content browser and drawing data consumption. And let's start from the last one. So as you know, then might know that Tecla structure is a modeling tool. We are creating uh, BIM models with Tecla, and from BIM models we are producing drawings. When you create a drawing, you create the dimensions and markings, uh, among some other things. What we are doing now in, in, in the Dixon, we are separating the, uh, uh, this uh, dimension and marking data and, and publishing that to the uh, Trimble Connect Cloud, and then reconnecting that data to the published model. That is actually uh, then re leading to a situation that, that the users can have a, uh, have a mobile application with which they can call the dimensions from the drawings. You can have the metadata for filtering the content. And, and the, the, this data is all the time uh, connected to the drawing. So in other words, you have a, a digital twin of the drawing data content. We have applied a patent from US, and I, I, in my understanding, we also got one from, for this. The second uh, thing helping the usability is the content browser. As you know, the co uh, quantity data is one of the key elements in the construction. So then, that is based on the quantities, you are managing the cost and the, and the time also. Uh, we have introduced now in the uh, in accordance with the uh, Diction Project, a content browser, which is a tool with which you can instantly report the, the content of the BIM models, also the added properties. You can create the hierarchical uh, reports. You can colorize the model based on the reports. You can uh, also also have the Excel export kind of the legacy functionality supported also. Let's take an example, how, how does that look like? So when I'm selecting here the four slabs, so you can see that the content is updated in the, in the content browser, you can switch also to the whole model and organize the model based on the object types, find the foundations, and again, select the part of that and see that what is exactly the quantities in that part of the, part of the foundations. You can also colorize the model. In this case, we are showing the uh, colorizing the based on the uh, concrete properties, or you can create this kind of custom visualizations and share those with the, as a view with the other parties. So to, to, to pinpoint that where is this uh, certain uh, certain uh, concrete grade, as in this example. The two. Uh, Key concepts for, for this workflow data are breakdown structures and properties. Let's take the breakdown structures here now first. So then that is something what we have released already at the end of uh, last year. 
a pre-release, so part of this is released. So, and the target is to create automatically uh, breakdown structures through, or through APIs, uh, automate them based on rules. And, uh, and uh, this is the context of what we are uh, you going to use for the managing the work packages, sequencing, integrations, basically the workflow data, what you need for planning the, planning the actions. This is also great help for, for filtering things, finding this, organizing the model based on your own data. I have an example of that as well. So what we do here is that we first take a look at the location breakdown structure. Here are the floors of this building, seven floors all together. Then with the content browser, as I said, you can organize the content based on properties, based on uh, uh, object types, and share that data into the, co uh, co in the organizer. Here you can see the, the elevated slabs. And now then we are defining the work package. So I take the vertical structures, walls and columns in third floor and, and in section B. And this uh, group of columns and walls is a kind of the perfect content for a work package, which you can in future use for, for managing, the, managing the work. You can do also this kind of visualizations of the, now this is a, a grouping based on the poor numbers, so you can uh, uh, sequence, so the sequencing of the work and all this data what you have added to the associated these to the to the work packages you can report that data also in the immediately in the in the content browser. As said, the second uh, key fun uh, fun key fundamental functionality is the property management. So we have introduced uh, also at the end of last year. Uh, uh, functionality, uh, preliminary functionality for managing the properties. So you can define property sets, you can associate them to the objects and the uh, organizer groups as well. Uh, you can populate, the, uh, populate and cre also create the property sets through an API. And, and this is the kind of the key element for integrating in future, for example, ERP or other sensor data systems and collect the data into, into the model, the as-built data. Let's take a look at, of that as well. Here are the foundations, and, and, and I'm browsing the, the uh, foundations one, uh, based on the uh, work packages, and you can see that here is one uh, uh, work package which doesn't have the properties, so add, just add the properties, insert the values, and you can do all this also through, the, through an API. Now they're doing that manually. Everything what is kind of uh, associated to the object is immediately reportable, and you get the data to the content browser where you can also organize the data based on the, based on the content. Uh, defining a property set is easy. You just kind of define the name of the property, select the type of that, and assign that to the property set, and it's immediately available for, the, for managing your properties. So here you will see that we are associating here temporary labor hours to the John Doe concrete LTD, and, and you can see that it's imme immediately there in, available in the, in the model. So these, as said, the, the data structures, property sets, breakdown structures, associations, we are looking forward to use for integrating different solutions based on the same data. So the idea is that so if you can uh, associate to the BIM data, project management data like the schedule, estimation, fabrication data, the actual construction data, and then kind of make these solutions to discuss with each other based on the standard uh, data models. And the kind of additional benefit in that is that you also get the that data available for the Trimble Connect consumers. So the end users can take a look at the, at the cost of certain group of objects and so on. And all that data what is created is available immediately for, for users. Our kind of the dream in the future is to, to build uh, this kind of federated collaborative production management environment based on these concepts. Um, so then the idea there is that uh, different uh, planning tools like the last planner, tack, tack time planning, uh, lean construction tools, production planning are integrated based on the same, con uh, same uh, standard data so that on the data level they are connected and sharing the same data. This should lead a better collaboration between stakeholders uh, and, a, and a kind of seamless flow of the information and, uh, 
and which will improve hopefully the productivity of the of the construction industry. This opens also the kind of the possibility to to track automatically the, 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 what, the, what things are happening and maybe in the future someday the, the connect uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence to this to, to propose the correct uh, decisions for the different stakeholders. All this uh, is not available at the moment, but part of that is. So if you want to take a look at the, what is uh, the content of the pre-release, which I mentioned, you can go to the connect.trimble.com and f find there the latest browser version of the connect and, and have a try. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. The program continues on Zoom. If you have not yet received the Zoom address, email now at zoom at aepartners.fi, and you'll receive a link to the meeting.